Hi, so here's another lecture video for the subject Principles and Theories of Language Acquisition and Learning. So specifically, we're going to talk about the schools of thought in language acquisition and we have the Generative Linguistics and Cognitive Psychology. Okay, so of course, we are going to talk about the Generative Linguistics first. Okay, so in the decade of the 1960s, Generative Transformational Linguistics emerged through the influence of Noam Chomsky and a number of his followers. Chomsky was trying to show that human language cannot be scrutinized simply in terms of observable stimuli and responses or the volumes of raw data gathered by held linguists. So, I think you know what I'm talking about. If you have watched the video before this one, the Structural Linguistics and Behavioral Psychology. So moving on, the generative linguist was in interested not only in describing language, achieving the level of descriptive adequacy, but also in arriving at an explanatory level of adequacy in the study of language. That is a principled basis independent of any particular language for the selection of descriptively adequate grammar of each language. So... Early seeds of the generative transformational revolution were planted near the beginning of the 20th century. Ferdinand de Saussure, 1916, claimed that there was a difference between parole, what Skinner observes, and what Chomsky called performance, on the other hand, and Langu, akin to the concept of competence, or our underlying and unobservable language ability. A few decades later, however, descriptive linguists chose largely to ignore Langu and to study parole. As was noted above, the revolution brought about by generative linguistics broke with the descriptivist preoccupation with performance, the outward manifestation of language, and capitalized on the important distinction between the overtly observable aspects of language and the hidden levels of meaning and thought that give birth to generate observable linguistic performance. So, let's talk about that langu and parole. Langu is the concept of any language as a semiological system, a social fact, and a system of linguistic norms. So, parole in typical translation means speech, okay? So, social, on the other hand, intended for it to mean both the written and spoken language as experience in everyday life. So, it is the precise utterances and use of language. So, we are talking about the performance and competence of the learner in terms of the second language acquisition. That's for generative linguistics. Okay, so let's have this one, cognitive psychology. Okay, so in other words, this is cognitivism. So cognitivism is the doctrine that the mind can be invoked in scientific investigation and even be made the object of study itself. Today, most psychologists, philosophers, and linguists are preferably happy to invoke invisible things like minds and purposes and even to make mind itself the object of study. This approach is called cognitivism. So, this theory is based on the developmentally readiness of learner. The psychologist Piaget says when the child is ready to learn, then he can be taught. He learns naturally. This idea can be regarded as a starting point of the cognitivist idea. The psychologist emphasizes the importance of three things. We have meaning, knowing, and understanding. So, under cognitive psychology again. Similarly, cognitive psychologists asserted that meaning understanding, and knowing were significant data for psychological study. Instead of focusing rather mechanistically on stimulus-response connections, cognitivists tried 
to discover psychological principles of organization and functioning. So we're going to mention here David Osbell. Okay? So from the standpoint of cognitive theories, the attempt to ignore conscious states or to reduce cognition to mediational processes reflective of implicit behavior not removes from the field of psychology what is most worth study studying but also dangerously oversimplifies highly complex psychological phenomena. So they're talking about what is there in the mind of an individual, in the brain of the individ individual. So according to them, learning is a meaningful process of relating new events or items to already existing cognitive concept. And it is thought to involve internal representations that guide performance. In the case of language acquisition, these representations are based on language system. That involves procedure for selecting appropriate vocabulary, grammatical rules, and pragmatic conventions governing language use. In short, the cognitivists say that language acquisition can be automatically attained. Okay, so additionally, cognitive psychologists like generative linguists sought to discover and underlying motivations and deeper structures of human behavior by using a rational approach. That is, they freed themselves from the strictly empirical study typical of behaviorists and employed the tools of logic, reason, extrapolation, and inference in order to derive explanations for human behavior. Going beyond merely descriptive adequacy to Explanatory power took on utmost importance. So here, let's have the summary of this ones, this theories, the generative linguistics and cognitive psychology. Okay. So the linguist and psychologist were to be sure interested in the what question, but they were far more interested in a more ultimate question. That is why. What underlying factors, innate psychological, social, or environmental circumstances, caused a particular behavior in a human being? So, in my last video, under the structural linguistic and behavioral psychology, I pointed out one situation in which those theories are involved. So, let me have that same scenario. And for this time, we're going to involve the one we are talking about, generative linguistics and cognitive psychology. Okay, so let's read the situation again. If you were to observe someone walk into your house, pick up a chair and fling it through your window and then walk out, different kinds of questions could be asked. Okay, so this is the another set of questions. So uh, it would ask why the person did what he or she did. What were the person's motives and psychological sta state? What might have been the cause of the behavior and so on? So it's more of the explanation of what was just observed in the scenario. Okay, so that's generative linguistic and cognitive psychology. Okay, so of course, the same references. We have the ebook and then the book, the ebook Principles of Language Learning and Teaching, 5th edition, by H. Douglas Brown, and the book Teaching Skills in English Language by Nita Prakash and Kam Lasina. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye, and watch another video pertaining to a school of thought in second language acquisition. And that will be the last one under the subject, Principles and Theories of Language Acquisition Learning. It is entitled Constructivism, a Multidisciplinary Approach. Bye and have a nice day.